Thank you, colleagues. The final item of business is a member's business debate on motion 22764 in the name of Mark Ruskell on a just transition for Ms Morden. The debate will be concluded without any question being put. Would those members who wish to speak in the debate please press the request to speak buttons now. And I call on Mark Ruskell to open the debate. Thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. And can I start by thanking members uh, for signing the motion and those taking part in the debate tonight uh, online and here in the chamber. When I was uh, first elected to Parliament in uh, 2003, uh, a debate like this would have been, quite frankly, unthinkable. Uh, industrial plants like Moss Moran and Longanet were permanent cogs in our economy. And the concept of a just transition was largely unknown, undiscussed, while climate change was still considered a very distant threat. But times change, and it's impossible to ignore the fact that Moss Moran remains one of the top three carbon emitters in Scotland, and an integral part of an oil and gas sector that is the world's biggest climate threat. We can't ignore the science that tells us that four-fifths of oil and gas reserves must remain in the ground if we're to have any chance of preventing an irreversible climate emergency. That's the global context, but the local context is changing too. At the outset, in the 1970s, there was fierce community opposition to Moss Moran, but in later years, critical voices were taken less seriously. But what we've seen in recent years has been renewed concern from communities living in misery from the noise and light pollution. And I particularly welcome the role that Moss Moran Action Group, Friends of the Earth, and Climate Camp have played in amplifying many of those community voices. I also welcome the recent news that the Moss Moran Community and Safety Committee is to be revitalized and its remit broadened, addressing the ongoing lack of trust between the local community operators and the regulators. This is really long overdue. I don't think that it's too early to move the debate on from flaring to the future of the plant and the need for a just transition, but I do worry that it could become too late. We have to learn the lessons from the past. Fife coal mining communities were betrayed in the 1980s and that legacy lives on today. There was no just transition workers and whole communities were left behind. And when Longanet then shut in 2016, it had been known for years that change was coming. There was a window to plan for transition with government, the workforce, the operator and the community. But again, just like the coal mining industry in the 80s, there was no transition. Politicians pretended that Longanet could continue to be run into the ground for years to come while time slipped away. The subsequent Longanet Task Force also failed to create a lasting positive legacy for Kincardine and surrounding communities. But what's now emerging at Longanet years later is finally an exciting vision for West Fife with concrete opportunities and the start of what we could call a Green New Deal. The electric train manufacturer Talgo set to create a thousand jobs and anchor in a new hub for electric transport innovation an environmental solution in place for the ash pans, a passenger and freight rail route from Alloa to Longanet, and then hopefully all the way to Dunfermline, economic opportunities that could come thick and fast. So we need to see the closure of Moss Moran, whenever that may be, as an opportunity to pull people across into new jobs that do have a strong long-term future. We need an industrial strategy for Fife that puts investment in low carbon jobs as the top priority. And these have to be fair jobs, which is why unions and their workforces need to lead the discussions about union recognition, sectoral bargaining and industrial ownership. Jobs in clean energy could exceed those in oil and gas threefold, but words are not enough and communities need to see action. In recent years, I've heard of workers at Bifab actually moving to Moss Moran, which can't be sustainable in the long term. But the delays that we've seen in making offshore wind farm subsidies and leases conditional on jobs coming to Fife are making workers rightly angry. They need to see concrete progress in securing Fife as a major hub for the offshore wind industry, and they need to see it fast. 
Now, I welcome the establishment of a just transition board um, for Grangemouth. And I hope that the government could confirm, I mean, hopefully tonight, that a board will be in place for Moss Moran with a broad remit to consider all options for the future of the complex and the people that it supports. But I am wary that the concept of just transition is being captured by the oil and gas sector as meaning maximum extraction with some wind-powered oil rigs on the side. That simply won't cut it. It won't deal with the climate emergency because the reality is that current North Sea reserves of 5.4 billion barrels of oil and gas already exceed the UK's carbon share of the Paris Climate Agreement. Industry plans to extend this to 20 billion barrels will fry the climate. And these irresponsible plans, wholly supported by governments, leave workers potentially facing a rapid collapse of their sector as the need for action to cut emissions will inevitably intensify in the difficult years ahead. The oil and gas strategy appears to be based on a deferred collapse and it would push communities dependent on the sector over the cliff edge. It's why we need a managed transition that stays within the limits set by the Paris Agreement. Now, I welcome in particular the publication today of the Offshore Report, an extensive survey of workers in the oil and gas sector by Friends of the Earth, Scotland, Greenpeace and Platform. It showed that morale is low, with by far the biggest concern being long-term job security. But it also showed a high willingness to retrain, with over 81% of workers saying they would consider moving to a job outside the oil and gas industry. We cannot provide these workers with long-term job security by turning a blind eye and continuing to prop up North Sea oil and gas, but we can provide them and their families with a future by starting the planning now for a just transition at sites like Moss Moran. Now, there are those who try and reconcile maximum extraction of oil and gas with climate change, believing that, believing that carbon capture and storage will allow the production of hydrogen from natural gas while storing carbon underground. But despite billions of financial support over the last decade, CCS remains largely unproven and untested at scale. And as a heating fuel, hydrogen can only be blended with natural gas at a tiny 20% in the grid. So we'll end up locking in natural gas at a time when we need to see a total decarbonisation of our heating. And when it comes to the use of CCS at downstream at Moss Moran, neither operators have plans to capture the vast amounts of carbon that the plants emit at source. Decarbonisation of heating should be one massive opportunity to grow new industries to replace dying ones. And skilled industrial engineers working at Moss Moran today could be at the vanguard of a vast heat pump and district heating sector in the UK, replacing our dependence on natural gas for good. But, presiding officer, in concluding, none of these opportunities will be realised by accident. The time is now to start planning the just transition, to ensure no workers are left behind, that no communities are left with a degraded environment, and that we can live within the limits of our planet. That journey should start today with a just transition board set up for Moss Moran. Thank you very much. I now call Annabel Ewing to be followed by Alexander Stewart. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. And I'm pleased to be called to uh, speak in the debate on a just transition for Moss Moran. And I too congra uh, congratulate the member for having secured it. As the MSP for Cowdenbeath constituency, I have obviously had considerable involvement in issues relating to Moss Moran on behalf of my constituents over the years. Uh, and a point I would wish to make at the outset is to recognise the commendable efforts of my constituents to have their voices heard on this important matter. Through their hard work and determination, they have arguably forced a veritable vote fetch on the part not just of the operators, but also on the part of SEPA, of Fife Council and of NHS Fife in terms of the way in which these organisations deal with the plant, with communication with the local communities and with the concerns of the local communities. Of course, many key issues are of ongoing concern. However, I think it is fair to note that there have been some positive and welcome changes. These include the far more proactive role of SEPA 
in its approach to discharging its regulatory responsibilities. This can be witnessed by, uh, for example, the submission of a report to the Crown Office and Procurator Fiscal Service on the April 2018 elevated flaring incident. And I'm also aware that more uh, recent incidents are the subject of ongoing investigations. And further to my most recent telephone conference with SEPA on Friday last, I note that they have issued a variation of permit notice limiting the extension of the deadline for the installation by ExxonMobil of noise-reducing noise flare tips to May 2021, taking into account the global pandemic that we are all currently operating within. I would also take this opportunity to welcome the revamping of the Bismarck and Brayfoot Bay Community and Safety uh, Committee, something I had called for. This, in fact, met in its new form last Thursday for the first time. Uh, and the revamping really has again been the result of uh, community pressure that has been brought to bear. Uh, and some of the features of this new approach will be that the chair will be drawn from the community. HSC is to be a member. Expert advisory groups are to be set up to look at air quality, noise, light and vibration pollution. There is to be enhanced communication with the local community and five council is helpfully to provide the secretariat. However, presiding officer, it is also fair to say that the significant disruption to my constituents' peaceful enjoyment of their lives over the years has led to an increasing desire on the part of many constituents, though by no means all constituents, to see an end to the plant in sight. Whilst many constituents, but again by no means all constituents, accept that it would not be possible to turn the tap off tomorrow, those constituents do, however, wish to know what the longer term plans for the site are. Mindful, of course, that at the moment we are in the midst of the COVID-19 global pandemic and the impacts that is having on jobs and our economy uh, in my constituency across Fife and across Scotland and the rest of the UK and indeed the world. I, I in fact, wrote to the Energy Minister, Paul Wheelhouse, MSP, on 1st September to call for a similar transition arrangement for Moss Moran to that being proposed for the Grangemouth complex. This would reflect the need to do what is necessary to secure Scotland's target of net zero by 2045, whilst at the same time leaving no workers or communities behind. If there can be a future transition board established for Grangemouth to support such uh, a just transition for workers and for the local communities that would be, would be affected, then why not for Ms Moran? I note that the Minister in his reply to my letter recognised that, that the Ms Moran site was an important asset for Scotland's energy infrastructure and a key player in the Fife economy. So it is vital that in the ongoing work towards 2045 and our net zero target being achieved, must more be kept in the frame and that its workers and community representatives be involved in the just transition process, which I understand is to be uh, formulated in more detail following the final report of the Just Transition Commission, uh, expected to be published in March 2021. I look forward to hearing uh, the Minister's uh, comments on these particular points. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Thank you very much. I call Alexander Stewart to be followed by Alec Rowley. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'm very pleased to be able to take part in tonight's debate, a just transition uh, from Ross Morin, and I pay tribute to Mark Russell for ensuring that this debate has taken place this evening. The issue of Moss Moran is an incredibly important one for the neighbouring residents of Fife uh, and for Scotland as a whole. And across the chamber, we are all committed to meeting the target of net zero emissions by 2045. This does, of course, necessitate considering how gas preparation will be managed in the future. Like Mark Russell, I very much welcome the announcement of a, a future industries board for Grangemouth Complex and was agreed in a similar transition board should be considered and must be considered for the most modern site itself. In recent years, we have seen unprecedented number of unscheduled flarings uh, incidents at Most Modern Deputy Presiding Officer. Residents have reported many of these antisocial times during the day, noise pollution, light pollution, uh, vibrations of their home. And many of them have suffered from sleep deprivation, uh, headaches or migraines, breathing difficulties, skin rashes, irritations to the eyes and throat, and anxiety is very large around the complex any time there is a flaring incident. I would like to pay tribute to the action group who have been tirelessly working in the background to try and bring these issues to the front. And I also welcome uh, that the, the safety committee is being reinvigorated. I think that is a, a good move uh, for the individuals. 
Exxon Mobil themselves say they're going to invest 140 million into the plant in Fife, uh, and they are going to have the installation of these noise reducing Exxon Fladel tips. And, and that is to be welcomed. But once again, that is to be delayed, uh, and we will not see that until April 2021. Notwithstanding the delay, of course, it's a welcome development, but it doesn't solve the situation. Uh, and the operator themselves have had to communicate better because that has been a major issue in, in the time I've been actively involved in Moss Modern since I became an MSP. Uh, but as I say, there are faults uh, on, on many sides as far as the residents are concerned. They do not just see the site being a problem. They see the Scottish Government, the Council, SEPA and NHS at times all pointing the finger of responsibility and failing to address some of the issues. And many people have been very frustrated and I've attended very, very uh, lively public meetings in the area over the last three or four years, as have many members uh, who have spoken already tonight. And that has been uh, a, a tribute to the community who have stood up uh, to the plant and stood up to the management that's going on and wanting answers. A just transition is maybe a, a long-term solution, but it is one that we need to face. We also have to think about uh, what is happening in the local community. Five councils suggested a way forward uh, last year when councils, except the nationals, voted uh, to have the Scottish Government commission an independent expert study into the environmental, social and health impacts of Moss Morden and the community. This would have gone a long way to address many of the local concerns. Uh, and I call upon the Scottish Government to reconsider that position uh, uh, and commission that study and I look forward to the Minister maybe making an announcement of that in her speech later. But wherever uh, the transition takes place, we need to ensure that is uh, the possible for economic involvement. We cannot uh, take away from the fact that Moss Moran is an employment opportunity for the people of Fife and the surrounding area. Local residents rely on jobs and support for themselves and their families to ensure that's the case. Therefore, there, if there is to be a transition, uh, 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 we need to talk about the models and, and greener industries and provide these jobs. The Labour... Yes? Happy Mark to take up. Thank the member for giving way. Would, would he and his party then back the establishment of a just transition board for Moss Moran? Alexander Stewart. As I've already said, I think Grangemore is a getting one, and I, and I do believe that is what Moss Moran should have. Uh, and, I, and I think that is the right thing to happen to support the communities. Labour's amendment tonight talks about the engagement with the trade unions. That's a very sensible and very pragmatic situation. And I agree with that, I will Labour Party. So in conclusion, Deputy Presiding Officer, I support the principles of establishing a just transition board for the site of Moss Moran to help to deal with the effects uh, and to target and to get our, our zero target down by 2045. Uh, moreover, in the short term, we need to see greater action from the Scottish Government and, and the operators of Most Modern to address the immediate long-term environmental, social, health impacts and operation uh, within the area to support the community. Thank you. Thank you very much. I call Alec Rowley to be followed by Claudia Beamish. Thank you, President Officer. Um, I'm pleased to speak in this debate today on the calls for the Just Transition Board for Mossmorn. I've spoken about the issues surrounding Mossmorn Petrochemical Plant for many years. Indeed, President Officer, I held a member's debate in this chamber uh, on the increase in flaring and safety worries back in June 2018. I have made the point during that debate that I was a teenager when planning permission was first sought for Mossmorn uh, and indeed when work began. And I remember and m my own family members and others who all had jobs at the time. But the view then was that many jobs could be created, not just for the construction of the site, but also from the wider local economy, uh, the downstream work that would follow, as well as spin-off opportunities in industries like agriculture. That didn't happen. Uh, although it was very much sold to the communities at that time that it would. We now know that while many jobs were created, they never uh, managed to increase the jobs at the level that had been promised. The greatest concern for those of us who live in the communities that surround the site is the safety of the site. The question is continually asked, is the site safe? And that's something that is now ongoing with the SEPA uh, actions that have been taken. But despite that, today is not about the safety of the site. Today is about a just transition. Uh, and for me, it is the jobs aspect that we have to focus on when talking about a just transition board for the plant. 
This is why I raised the amendment to the motion we are debating today. I specifically made the point in my amendment that the trade unions Unite and GMB have hundreds of members employed on both the Shell and Exxon sites and considers therefore that they should be fully involved in any discussion on the future of the sites and on, a, on any would-be members of the Just Transition Board that if it were to be established. I hope it is accepted by all those concerned with any forms of just transition, that workers are a key part of that discussion. After all, it is their jobs that are at stake. It is workers with homes, mortgages, rents, families, and understandably, they will be concerned when any discussion of their jobs is raised, whether that be in here or anywhere else. Making sure that trade unions and workers themselves are an integral part of these discussions should be a priority, presiding officer. Only today, a report by Friends of the Earth, uh, Scotland, Greenpeace and Platform has shown that there is significant barriers that are preventing workers transitioning from oil and gas to renewable jobs. And one of the key takeaways from that report, which I think Mark Ruskell did mention, was that there is a need for far more engagement with workers if there is to be a just transition away from fossil fuels, which does not penalise the workforce. And I would like to quote from the Friends of the Earth in that report on the BBC today, where they say, despite the Scottish Government's rhetoric, the idea of a just transition has failed to reach the overwhelming majority of workers who will be most directly impacted. Workers' voices must be at the centre of that transition process. The government must ensure oil and gas workers are supported in secure and sustainable jobs. Some of the main concerns from the workforce that was surveyed in that report were concerns around limited opportunities for workers and that retraining is too expensive, it becomes a barrier. This is where the Scottish Government has a responsibility to ensure that those new green jobs of the future are firstly created and available for workers to transition to. But I would have to say, presiding officer, in a report published in June from the STUC, the figures show that employment in Scotland's low carbon and renewable energy economy flatlined between 2014 and 2018. Despite past promises of 130,000 jobs by 2020 directly employed in the renewable sector, the figure in 2018 was only 23,000 jobs. So that speaks for itself, and I'm sure you can understand why workers are concerned when politicians stand up and talk about the Green New Revolution and the Green New Jobs that have not materialised so far. So to finish, presiding officer, I would have to say that we need to address those issues and we need to address the mistakes of the privatisation of our natural resources and not allow the same to happen that's what's happened before. There's major criticism to ensure that our renewable sector works first and foremost for Scotland and for the people of Scotland, that we need to have a far greater say in how those services, those, those industries are developed. Thank you. Thank you, and I now call Claudia Beamish. Claudia Beamish will be the last open debate speaker. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And my thanks also go to Mark Ruskell, MSP, for his motion that brought this important debate to our chamber, and my colleague Alex Rowley, MSP, for, strength, for his strengthening amendment. Scottish Labour has unwaveringly been committed to a just transition for Scotland. We understand the stringent emissions reductions targets are necessary and that justice and strategy must be inextricably linked and woven in their delivery. I welcome the calls for a just transition board for Moss Moran and, and recognise um, uh, Mark Ruskell for calling for that 
in the debate. Greater state intervention is required. No ifs, no buts. Unions representing workers at the sites are fairly air airing their scepticism, as we've heard from Alec Rowley, in a, in a just transition. They are seeing jobs lost to overseas companies, sometimes with exploitative conditions, and watching the, the Scottish Government often shy away from any robust industrial strategy or legislative assurance for the future. A statutory long-term and independent just transition could be the oversight needed to avoid these patchwork affairs, progress for Grangemouth, yet a campaign needed for Moss Moran, for instance. I value the work of the Scottish Government's iteration of the Commission, but as I've said before, its short lifespan is unjustifiable, and I fear it won't have the time to guide the unprecedented step change and strategy needed for a real just transition that values the existing skills of our workforce, preserves and creates quality jobs, and sees the decarbonisation of all sectors in the move to net zero. The Exxon and Shell sites at Mosmoran are significant employers, as has been recognised in the debate today. And these workers and communities are owed a just transition, particularly in the midst of a green recovery from a very worris worrisome time globally. That is why my colleague and member for Mid-Scotland and Fife, Alex Rowley, has lodged the amendment to the, the motion, stipulating that the representing unions, Unite and GMB, and the membership must be included in the discussions on the site's future and the establishment of the membership of a just transition board. I similarly welcome the Grangemouth Future Industry Board and hope that the Cabinet Secretary can agree that the same consideration must be offered to those workers and to the workers of Fife. The same concerns with membership can be found here. As the Programme for Government says, it is to include Scottish Government representatives, agencies, full cut council and businesses with an interest. Where are the unions and, and worker voices? My Labour colleagues are trying to get the message through. It is vital to address the transformation through the perspectives of the communities most affected. This representation is particularly important given the flaring disruption and the many other worrisome issues that have come up for the local communities that we've heard about in the debate today and which communities have endured uh, for far too long. Along with my five colleagues, as a member for South Scotland, I've heard and know only too well of the pain left behind by a government's failure to manage a transition. The Scottish Coalfields in the 2020 report by the Coalfields Regeneration Trust shows that former coal mining communities still experience high rates of child poverty, unemployment, lower life expectancy, and among the country's most deprived communities. To me, that is a compelling call for action for a just transition for tomorrow, not to mention correcting those mistakes of the past. As we've heard today, the Friends of the Earth Scotland Greenpeace and Platform uh, report was published uh, on offshore oil and gas workers which, and, and their future, which lays bare the resounding failure to engage with these workers on the notion of a just transition and their immediate future. 91% of respondents to the report had not heard of the term just transition. What does this say? This government and all of us in this parliament need to do better. It is time for the Scottish Government to show, not tell. For Scotland's wider shift to net zero, there will be a mass scale infrastructure project arrangement needed, be it retrofitting the housing stock, district heating networks, decarbonising our transport system, remanufacturing, and far more. These projects can and must make for high quality employment, unique skills bases valued on the international market as well, and for more resilient communities. For workers in Moss Moran and communities around Fife, a detailed and democratic plan will be needed to secure these opportunities. Let's all make sure it happens. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Thank you very much. I now call on Marie Goujon to reply to the debate. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And again, just like other members, I'd want to thank Mark Ruskell for putting forward this motion and for bringing forward this debate to the Chamber. Uh, because I do I, I very much appreciate the tone that the debate's taken and the contributions, which I think, while everybody has, of course, acknowledged the, the problems, it has been very much about looking towards the future and what happens from here. 
Now, as we emerge from COVID-19, we have a chance to build a greener, fairer and more equal society and economy. And we're absolutely committed to a just transition to net zero emissions by 2045. And our programme for government put net zero ambition at the heart of our immediate action on jobs, skills, procurement and investment. And we're laying the foundations and are under no illusions that this will be a long-term national endeavour. And that requires planning at all levels, regional, sectoral, and at the level of individual businesses and sites. That will be crucial to ensure that opportunities arising from that transition aren't missed and that risks associated with rapid structural change are mitigated. Because I want to make clear at the outset of my remarks that the concerns the, of the local community in the relation to the flaring incidents at Moss Modern are clear. They're absolutely well understood by both government and by regulators as well. And of course, they've been well articulated by members across the chamber tonight from Annabel Ewing uh, and her constituents. And I know that uh, uh, Alex Rowley, Mark Ruskell, Annabel Ewing and other members have been engaged in uh, these issues for quite a long period of time. And I'm sure, as members will be aware, SEPA has now concluded its investigation into flaring and concluded that in April last year and submitted a report to the Crown Office and Procurator Fiscal Service. And that's a measure of the, the seriousness with which they are treating unplanned flaring incidents at that plant. And we're clear that due process must be followed and it would be inappropriate to comment further on the flaring events while the Crown Office are considering SEPA's report. I do just want to highlight some of the new measures that have been put in place uh, since then, however. On the 13th of May, SEPA announced a further package of measures to enhance assurance around the regulatory approach, which will be carried out throughout this year and in coming years. And there are two key elements to that. The first is that SEPA will work with Fife Council, its health partners, ExxonMobil and people from the local community to review how and where air quality is monitored. And the second is for SEPA to have an external review conducted by the Irish Environmental Protection Agency to share best practice. Now, a key part of the motion that Mark Ruskell brought forward tonight was about the, the just transition, and he highlighted the, the importance for that and stated that we have to learn lessons from the past, and that's absolutely right. And that was, again, emphasised by Alex Rowley in his uh, contribution. Uh, and again, as Alex Rowley said, this is it's people's jobs that are at stake. This is about their lives. So how we handle this from here is, of course, vitally important um, because all contributions highlighted the importance of a just transition that benefits workers and local communities too. Now, undoubtedly, there are risks associated with change, but we can't lose sight of the opportunities that arise from being at the, the vanguard of the move to a net zero economy, because we do have the chance to build a greener, fairer and more equal society and economy. Our landmark Climate Change Act is the toughest, most ambitious legislative framework in the world, and we took world-leading action to embed just transition principles at its heart. And in addition to that, Scotland's Independent Just Transition Commission will be invaluable as we seek to apply those principles in Scotland. Now, there was a, uh, an interim report provided uh, by the Commission in February and a Green Recovery report at the end of, the, uh, end of July, which emphasised meaningful engagement with all key stakeholders. And I know that was uh, a point that, again, had been raised by members in the Chamber tonight. Reducing the emissions from Moss Modern and other large industrial sites in Scotland will be absolutely pivotal in meeting our climate ambition. Our climate change plan update will be published later this year and that will help to set us on a trajectory towards net zero, ensuring our actions in the immediate term are in line with our long-term goals and helping set out our strategy. Now, a number of members also raised the Grangemouth Future Industry Board. Now, that's an early staged initiative we announced in the programme for government to coordinate public sector decision making and to encourage economic and transition activity at the Grangemouth Industrial Cluster, which will also in turn help to maximise the impact of the Falkirk growth deal. Now, the Grangemouth Cluster comprises numerous manufacturing businesses and approximately three quarters of our largest industrial users are concentrated there. Um, but of course, Grangemouth isn't the only area of industrial activity in Scotland. And we will do all we can to learn from the mistakes observed in industrial trans transformations of the past. Now, turning to another key part 
of Mark Druskell's motion and a key theme of the debate tonight. I know that there have been calls to establish uh, a, a just transition for, uh, specifically for Moss Morin, perhaps along the lines of what has been uh, uh, what we have announced in the programme for government for Grangemouth. However, as I said in my comments at the start, it wouldn't be appropriate to to closely engage or to, to build that kind of relationship with, uh, with uh, Moss Morden at the moment while the Crown Office considers SEPA's report. And uh, as a government, we can't commit to any specific action on the future of Moss Morden until the outcome of the Crown Office consideration is known. So I do hope that members across the chamber can understand uh, that, that position. Yes. Ross Greer. I appreciate the point that the Minister is making. I'm grateful for taking the intervention. Does the government accept the in principle possibility of extending just transition boards to other sites across Scotland? I say that with a regional interest for the decommissioning Hunterston nuclear power station. Now, this is something that has been specifically looked at for, for Grangemouth. I, I'm not going to rule anything particularly in or out at this moment, but I think we have to see how that model works there. Uh, and again, when looking at Moss Morin, there's a very particular set of circumstances there, and we need to go through that process. Um, but I think we have to, to look and see uh, if that is something that could perhaps uh, work in other areas. But we really have to see how this establishes itself first and how that work uh, continues. Now, Scotland's Just Transition Commission will provide advice next March, but it has shared some early thinking and planning ahead and ongoing proactive engagement are prominent themes. It's clear that securing the economic and social opportunities associated with the net zero transition will require careful planning and collaboration between government, industry, workers and communities in the years ahead. Now, this motion concerns businesses operating in Scotland's oil and gas sector. The Scottish Government recognises the need to do all that we can to help key sectors in this extremely challenging economic context. And now more than ever, we need a just transition that supports sustainable growth and jobs. Now, the oil and gas industry is a critical component of Scotland's economy and our energy mix, and it will remain integral during a sustainable, secure and inclusive energy transition. Now, this sector, including Moss Morin, can play a positive role, helping to channel resources and innovative supply chain activity to design the diverse energy system that we need for the future. And it's crucial that a sustainable and resilient future is developed for those who work in the industry, whose skills and expertise will be vital for the move to our zero carbon future. Now, in partnership with industry, we want to build on Scotland's considerable strengths and attract economic investment for decarbonisation. And we want to support and grow existing sectors and attract new advanced manufacturing. Our programme for government commits £60 million in support to overcome the challenges that industry faces in this transition. And that includes £34 million for a Scottish industrial uh, energy transformation fund that will support investment-ready mature energy efficiency technologies and fund studies for deeper emissions cuts from industrial processes. And alongside the Manufacturing Low Carbon Challenge Fund, the £60 million support package demonstrates our commitment to stimulate existing industrial players to invest in decarbonisation measures themselves and to help nurture and scale up innovative low carbon solutions. And to, to wind up tonight, we have embarked on a national mission to create new jobs, good jobs and green jobs, protecting people from redundancy and employment and investing in our Green New Deal. We've already set out the first tranche of our £2 billion low carbon fund and combined with our £100 million support to help businesses create new green jobs, the series of commitments I've outlined this evening demonstrates how serious the Scottish Government is in responding to the momentous economic and climate challenges before us with real and targeted action to drive a just transition to a net zero economy. And I look forward to working with colleagues across the Chamber to that end. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister. That concludes this evening's debate. And I now close this meeting.